Hey, what's going on guys? It's Patrick from Clay here, and I wanted to come on here really quickly and give you a complete start to finish rundown on how to aggregate a list of names from a website directory, import them into Clay, enrich them, and ultimately send out a personalized email campaign. And you're in for a treat today because I'm going to show you the exact campaign I used to get a few clients from my marketing agency. And without further ado, let's hop into it. So as you can see here, I am on the Y Combinator website. Um, they are a great way to source clients. Uh, you know that they have money because they were just funded by Y Combinator. And they're likely small enough to the point where you can reach out to them and you'll get some sort of founder response if your outreach is good. So how did I scrape this entire list? Pretty simple. All I had to do was open up the Clay Chrome extension, which is available on the Chrome Web Store. And we actually already have a pre-scraped aggregator for YC companies in the startup directory. And we actually have a few. I ended up using this one. And as you scroll through the different rows, if we keep adding, as you can see, it automatically updates with every single company within these rows. And after you get as many companies as you'd like to scrape, you're able to export it to a clay table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the clay table that I ended up working in, how I enriched it, how I personalized it, and how I ultimately ended up structuring the email campaign to get some clients. All right, and we are in the clay table. I believe this table was the winter 22 batch for YC. I could be mistaken. But as you can see, I have the company name, location, and I have them all mapped out here. There's only about 100 because you'll see later on, I ended up narrowing it down to just validating the emails and people I can reach out to. Um, so it ends up being a smaller number than you initially start with. But regardless, I have a list here. So unfortunately, the YC website does not let you scrape the links to the Y Combinator company pages, which is required for this. But I have a cheeky way to get around it. We only had the company name and location. That's all we imported. However, the way that the Y Combinator website is structured, every single one of the companies, if you click on it, like let's say we'll go to Airbnb, has the exact same stem structure. It's ycombinator.com slash companies slash the company name, right? So as you can see here, we have a formula column. It's not a text column. It's a little bit more special. What you're able to do is either edit text or aggregate some sort of text or generate some sort of text using either AI or you can just use code depending on how technically savvy you are. I am not, so I ended up using AI to do so. And all I had to do here was go to the formula and I clicked use AI here. And as you can see, I just asked it to merge ycombinator.com slash company slash with the first word of the company name in lowercase. And I think I said, yeah, if there's a second word in company name, add a dash. And then the second word of company name in lowercase. So it's always just giving it the structure of what the YC company domain stems were like and after that it was able to output me links to every single one of the y combinator companies in the list so now we have the name the location and the link of all of these y combinator companies how are we going to end up actually finding the founders and their contact information so we can reach out to them so we are on a y combinator company page right now i picked airbnb it was the first one on their list so we're just going to go with it as you can see, there are a lot of important tidbits of information regarding the company on this page. Uh, one of them is the domain, which is very important for a lot of Clay integrations. We also have things like the team size, the founded, a description, which is actually something I ended up importing. And then we also have things like the founders, but also the founders' social media profiles and descriptions of the founders, which is incredibly helpful for what we're about to do. And you're going to see why the possibilities with all this information is essentially endless, especially when it comes to personalizing outreach at scale. So what we have to do next is create a scrape structure for this page. Um, each one of these pages is identical in nature. The only thing that's different is the information that is associated with each company. So what we have to do here is open up Clay, the Chrome extension again, and you'll see here we already have it mapped out. So RYC company page section, and you can add other things to this. This is just kind of a baseline, but we have the logo, the company name, the website, the team size, we even have all their socials. And what I ended up doing when I created mine was even added the founders and the founder socials and the founders descriptions, just so I can have as much possible information about these people in my clay table. And just quickly, if you need to know how to do this, all you have to do is go to select data, select data from page, single attribute. And then let's say we wanted to add the name of the first founder. We just do founder one name. All, we have, all I had to do is click on the name and it popped up automatically, add attribute and boom, you've got founder name right here. And so now you have one page scraped, and this is essentially a template that you're building so you can apply it to a bunch of different companies all at one time. And you're about to see kind of the magic of how that works within Clay in just a second. So let's get into it. So we have this incredibly powerful integration called Get Data From Page. And what it pretty much does is it combines Clay scraping abilities with the ability to build out a template within a web page to scrape. What it's going to do is it's going to be able to scrape all the information that we just defined, but for each one of these white combinators. And I've already run it, of course, um, but 
if you go in the settings here, you can kind of see what the deal is. All I had to do is input the Y Combinator link. And since I've already created a template for these web pages, all I have to do is just click run because I've, the template's already created. So it knows what it has to scrape and it's just going to run it all out. And it's going to pop out a ton of information. And so if you click on it right here, you'll see all of this information is now here. I have the founder names. I have the founder descriptions. I have the founder socials. I have the company description, pretty much all I need, right? And so after I was able to map out all that information, now it was time for a little bit of enrichment. So what I did first was I mapped out the founder one name and I decided I'm just gonna reach out to the first founder of each one of these companies for this, just to simplify things for myself. But if you really wanted to, you could do a sort of a waterfall campaign. You could reach out to every one of the founders, et cetera, et cetera. So what I did next was I found their social media accounts and if they had a Twitter that was outreachable, I guess you could say, I would DM them on Twitter with the same outreach messages I had just because I figured Twitter would be a little bit more high conversion. However, that's just an optional step, but let's just say you want to do an email campaign. That's easy enough too. So after I was able to find the founder name and the founder social media, I was like, okay, I want to find their emails. How do I do that? Clay has a ton of integrations. I think we have four or five for finding a work email. My favorite one is the in-house Clay one. It just seems to be the most effective with the best data quality, but you can also waterfall each of the integrations. So you could have one Let's say we start with the Clay one and it finds their work email awesome, but then for another row it doesn't, then it goes to the next one and it, it tries like three or four different integrations and that's like the highest data quality one. But in this case, all I used was the Clay one. And all it requires, if we can click right here, is the founder name, just their full name, and then the company domain. And that's all it takes. And once you run the integration, you can find all of these emails associated with the founders of the company. And it's actually super easy for YC because a lot of this is super accurate. They just created the website. So their emails are likely valid. Um, yeah, it was way easier than it would be for a lot of other niches or a lot of other ICPs. Okay, so after that, we have a list of emails now. Very easy, ran the integration, popped out a bunch of emails, but we have to make sure that they have a valid inbox. And so all I had to do was use the Hunter Validate email integration, which you just throw the email in right here. And it'll tell you whether you can send it to the inbox or not. This is pretty important for deliverability. You want to make sure that all of these emails are valid or you might get blacklisted on Gmail. Okay, so this is one of the coolest parts of the entire process. I wanted to personalize each one of these emails to sound like I was personally sending it to them without doing any sort of automation. And the other way to do that is to use something really personal and individual and meaningful about the company that they can read and be like, oh my gosh, he did his research. So I decided in this case, I was going to mention this something along the lines of, I truly believe that this company is going to be the best in the world at blank. And so the easiest thing to do in this situation was just to get the company description and throw it into an open AI integration on Clay. So I'll show you what I put as my prompt. You're welcome to steal this. It worked for me, so hopefully it worked for you as well. Um, what I did here is I just put using this company description, tell me one thing that the company name likely does very well for their customers. Format your answer as an action. For example, if the company is good at building sandcastles, say building sandcastles. And then I've given them the description. And then I ran the rows. And then all I did was after that was I had to get the founder first name so I could use it for the email. I edited the text so it was all lowercase. And then I asked if it was B2B or B2C so I could set out the email campaign. So now you've seen what I've done with the data. You've seen how I've, I've enriched it. You've seen how I've imported it. You've seen how I've sourced it. Now you're going to see how I'm structuring it in an email campaign to eventually send out to these founders. All right. We are now at Instantly, which is my email tool of choice. And I'm going to show you the different prompts that I used, how I integrated all of them, and how I eventually sent them out to get a few clients. As you can see off the bat, this is a pretty long email copy. I generally try to keep mine a little bit shorter than this. But for this one, I really wanted to make sure that I gave them my value prop, I put in the personalization, and I just didn't leave anything out. So here's the prompt. I pretty much just said, hey, to the founder, congrats on your acceptance into YC. I saw a company name featured in the new batch page, and I'm hooked by the concept. I genuinely believe in the potential of company name to become the best in the world at, and we use my personalization, so the best in the world at building sandcastles, whatever. And then I said, I'd love to help in the growth end. I gave them a quick background about myself and just a couple of things that I've done. And then I said, if you're interested, I'd love to schedule a call to hear more about company name, talk about what I do in a bit more detail, and let me know if the time works and you can or to book a meeting on my calendar. Um, and then after that, I just put a couple of follow-up emails. Um, in this case, I was just like circling back to see if it makes sense to schedule a call. I truly believe I can add significant value to the company name. And if not, here's a video of dancing craps to enjoy. Um, I just threw that in there as like a weird differentiating factor. And then followed up about the dancing crab video, sent another follow-up email. Um, pretty standard, nothing crazy there. So that's pretty much the entire flow that I used to reach out to these different companies. And again, it ended up landing me one to two clients. I guess one client that ended up referring me to another within YC. Um, so 
I'd say it was quite effective, especially with how few emails I ended up sending out. You have to think, I sent out 100 emails, around 100 emails, and then ended, I ended up getting quite a few positive responses. I actually had one like pseudo job offer, and then I ended up getting the one client response, booked a meeting with them, um, ended up making a deal, and I'm still working with them to this day. And I think it kind of goes to show how amazing personalization can be for email. A lot of people in email marketing are really just sending out 20,000 emails a month and getting, sure, responses, but it's taking a lot more resources. Um, you can really consolidate that resource effort and ideally your spend by personalizing outbound at scale with Play. So I hope there's a lot of value here. This was a huge use case for me. And it's something I like to show people when I'm demonstrating the power of Play to them. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions regarding this and uh, you know, drop a like and a comment so the higher ups at Clay can give me a raise for these YouTube videos. And I hope this is helpful and happy prospecting.